Now that we've created our project, we can get to work. This is the design we're going to follow when creating our landing page. Before building the layout and adding elements, we have an optional, yet important step, defining the design language. This means defining a color palette, sizes, and text styles. We encourage you to do this because it'll speed up your work and you'll achieve a consistent visual look throughout your project. The design language panel is situated on the right side of the screen and is split into three categories, color, text, and layout. From the colors tab, we'll be able to set all the color tokens that we'll use throughout our project. As we can see, we already have some predefined categories and values. All we have to do is adapt them to our needs. The convention for when we are naming our tokens is to use numbers between 100 and 900. We will set purple as our primary color and add some variations. We will also set a different color for our text in the gray section. To do this, we will add a new token. Then, we will right-click on it to set it as foreground color. These tokens can now be used when styling the color properties of text, border, or background colors. We will learn more about this in an upcoming video on styling elements. Now, let's go to the Text Styles tab. We can see that we already have two predefined text styles. The first one is applied to all text type elements in our project. To show that, we can see it's marked with the default label. We'll update these to match our design. For our default font, we want to set it to the Interfont family. Browsing through this list, we quickly find out that it's not in here, so we'll need to import it. We click on more Google fonts and search for the font. Then, we simply import it. We'll now set up text style for our heading elements. We'll rename it to Headline 1 and change the font family and size. We'll duplicate this heading style twice, and make the appropriate changes to the title and the font size for Headline 2 and Headline 3. We also have a different style for the button text, so we'll add that as well. Lastly, we have the Layout tab. Similar to the color tokens, any new project comes with predefined layout tokens. These tokens are split into three categories, size, spacing, and radius. As you might have guessed, size tokens can be used when setting an element's width or height, spacing tokens can be used for margin and padding, while radius can be used for the border radius property. Let's go ahead and add a new radius token that we'll use for our buttons. Now that we have our design language set up, we can start adding the content in the next video lesson. See you there.